Okay, good morning everyone. Woo, I'm coming out loud here. <laughs> Welcome to church. So cool to be able to be in the building. We've been talking about that and praying for this for a long time now. It's not the full building yet. It's not what we, we really want, but hey, it's better than what it was one or two months ago. So it's really great to be here. We're going to praise and worship God together. We're going to hear the word of God. Thank you for joining us online. Those that are online, there's going to be a bit of change with the online platform. Right now, you're able to chat. That chat, we will no longer be very shortly. You'll still be able to watch the service on the YouTube platform, but it won't be hosted because we are fellowshipping here now. So we don't need to do it on the internet. So yeah, whoop, whoop. So we encourage you to sign up. Next week is Easter. I don't know if you have signed up already. Those that are here, if you haven't, obviously those at home are getting a little bit of a step ahead because I would go on that thing, click sign up right now and make sure you've got a spot for next week. Today is Palm Sunday, which is such a cool moment for us Christian thinking of Jesus um, coming up declared as king with the palm leaves on the floor and the cloaks on the floor and just this moment of, of having Jesus lifted on high. A week after, we know what's going to happen, but today there's a moment of worship that happens in a community, in a town that is just extraordinary. And I just thought this morning, all of us here, all of you at home, let's remember that moment. Let's think of Jesus coming He's, he's coming into Black River. He's coming into whatever region you are. And the privilege of being able to drop absolutely everything. Take what you have and lay it down to see the King coming up. And just to worship and praise Him. And so we're going to spend a time of worship now. We've blessed with amazing musicians. And let's just think and remember what Jesus did for us. That moment and what they were shouting. Hosanna, blessed is He. Who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Let's stand up and let's worship our king together this morning. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I'll raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Raise a hallelujah, I'll raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Come on, we raise a hallelujah, I'll raise a hallelujah. Praises roll out from the ashes of 
Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. So again, it's a pleasure to be here today to worship the Lord, to praise the Lord for, for all what He is, all what He has done for us. And um, we had one good promise that the Lord always gave us that He is always able. Amen? Amen. God is always able and He never fails to His promises in our lives, in the plans He had for, for, for us. And and let's praise him this morning for, 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 for him to be able to do above expectations sometimes. We, we, just, we just think of something and God goes above, above what we, we always think. So let's sing today, God is able. Amen. Through the winter rain and beyond the horizon. 
present with mercy for today faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and that's why i sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips Beside their TVs, their screens, so that you can bless everyone, Lord. We just want to put this church in your hands and also every church meeting at the same time, Lord. That you can take care of every moment, every second we'll spend with you. We just want to, to thank you with all our hearts that you're good in all times, Lord. And we just want to, to, to give you all the praise, all the glory. And Lord, we, we will bring also the, the, men, the men you choose to bring your word today so that you can bless him, you can bring him wisdom, that he can share your words, you can bless us with your, with your words, Lord. 
just want to praise you. We just want to give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, worship team. What a privilege to worship God like that together. And looking forward to be even more very soon. Keep praying for just the restrictions to be lifted a bit. We are going through a Bible reading plan for Easter. I don't know if um, you know about it. If you don't know, it's never too late to jump in. It's called Take Up Your Cross. Today's one was one that really stirred me because often we, I don't know, maybe all your prayers get answered when you pray, pray God answers and God's favors on you with that. I don't get all my prayers answered. And I must say, after sometimes a long time, I feel a little bit like, is it still worth, you know, praying that prayer? Like, I'm going to stop now. And this morning, I'm going to give you like a little bit of a hint to go there. It speaks exactly about that. Somebody who's been praying a prey and how not to get discouraged. And it speaks and encourages us to carry on because God is good as we worship this, uh, this morning. And he is able always. And so I'd encourage you to go and read that one. So today's day 10. A little bit more announcements. Um, kids ministry, obviously, those that are here, you can see we don't have kids roaming around every, everywhere. We've got kids ministry happening on the other side. It's, it's really a blessing to have kids ministry. We've got um, three little boys, and, and if just the three of them were here, we wouldn't be able to do this because they would be jumping around and having a lot of fun. Right now, they're being taught on the other side. They're worshiping together. They're learning the Word of God, and they're building relationships with brothers and sisters. But it takes a team. Kathy um, has been leading that, which is really great, but it takes a team to be present and to help out. And so i just love to encourage us just to think about that. It's, it's not a lifelong commitment. If it's one Sunday in the year, that is a blessing to Kathy because it's one Sunday. And then as well, sometimes we think, you know, oh, I'm going to have, there's so much work involved in that. It's so out of my means. I can't do it. Would you just ask Kathy, Kathy, I, I don't have anything, but I'd love to help one Sunday. How can I help you? You know, the, yesterday I was chatting with her. She was just saying, sometimes it just takes, we were saying she enjoyed that. Um, it takes big souls worshiping with little souls. And that's all it takes. And so it's not doing anything extravagant. It's just sometimes just a present there to help. Also, obviously, if you're a teacher and you love kids and you're not serving in kids' ministry, I want to tell you, would you please go serve in kids' ministry? They need a hand and they need help there. Um, and it's beautiful. It's, um, there's a saying that says, you know, it, it takes a village to raise a child. But I think as well, like it takes a community to be a church. It, it doesn't take two or three people, a worship leader, somebody who preaches. It actually takes a whole community to be a church and, and to impact in here. So I'd just love to encourage you this morning, if you're not serving, we're gathering again, we're heading back into um, seeing the kingdom advance, and would you take a step of faith into serving in any area? You know, it could be anything. We're starting hosting, worship gifts, sound, anything. If, if you've got a gift, would you bring it to the church? Come on, please. Easter. So next week is Easter. It's an exciting time, um, and we've got uh, we're doing things a little bit different. I suppose on a on a Friday you've got Easter Friday, you know, service. So what we're going to do here, because of the restrictions, and we're gonna the church is going to be open from about half past six in the morning to half past eight that evening. Full day, the church will be open, so you'll be able to come. There will be. Um, how can I say that? Like a little playlist, about 15 to 20 minutes playlist. So you'll be able to come sit and there'll be a service that will play for you. The service will go on every half an hour. So we'll start at half past six and then every half an hour there'll be a service. So you might arrive five minutes early, the service will be finishing and you'll come in and out as it goes. There'll be tea and coffee outside. I'd really encourage you, don't, don't only come alone, but maybe, you know, uh, share it with someone. You know, on Friday, what are you doing? Um, churches aren't open, but this is what's happening. Redeemer Church is open. Why don't you come and spend that moment? There will also be communion in the back, so you'll be able to take communion. And there'll be, well, when you come on Friday, you'll see there, there'll be a little bit of something happening there that's going to be really exciting. But it's just really a time that, that Friday is an important day for us. And just to commemorate, partake in it, come alone, bring someone the next one. It's, it's a long, it's the full day that it's open. 
And then we've got two servers, so it will be the same as today. There'll be two servers on Easter. You need to sign up for that so same thing. Would you encourage, I'd encourage you to sign up and encourage your neighborhoods and the community around you to sign up. And my phone is trying to connect with other phones here. Online service, so those that are watching and those of you that thought maybe, you know, the next, I'll go back on the online platform, I want to encourage you, stay here because we're going to be talking a lot more here. The chat platform online, we're no longer going to be doing this because we're meeting together. So I understand, you know, if you can't make it and you want to sneak peek on YouTube or that's the platform that it's going to be, it's going to be on YouTube. So there won't be people hosting you online anymore very soon. Social media will let you know. But I just want to give you a heads up. Those that are watching, I hope you're hearing me. If you want a conversation, come here. Please, we're all here now and we're meeting here. So there'll still be the service, but there won't be the, the fellowship that has been happening in the past. That is me. It's been long, sorry, Carlo. Carlo's going to bless us with a word this morning. Your hand, you're good. Good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to see you. Seth has already um, shared off my preach anyway, so it, it will be short. <laughs> um, so as Seth said, today is Palm Sunday and that we just commemorate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and with in, Beth in Jerusalem <laughs> with the palms being waved and clothes being thrown in front of him. Um, but as we near Easter, um, we look at the time uh, just before, during, and after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Um, and during this time, there are many lessons that we can learn. And today, I want to spend some time on prayer. Um, as it said, if you um, are following that Take Up Your Cross devotional, um, today specifically talks about prayer, and I would also like you to spend some time on that. And something that Jesus often did, um, and also specifically in the time just before his arrest at the garden at Gethsemane um, on the Mount of Olives. So, <coughs> you know, many years ago, somewhere in Africa, the first uh, converts to Christianity um, were very diligent about their prayer. In fact, uh, the believers each had their own special place outside the village where they, would, they went to pray in solitude. And the villagers reached these prayer rooms by using their own private footpaths um, through the brush. And when the grass began to grow over one of these trails or these footpaths, it was evident that the person to whom it belonged was not praying very much. And because these new Christians were concerned for each other's spiritual welfare, um, a unique custom sprang up. So whenever anyone noticed an overgrown prayer path, he or she would go to the person and lovingly warn, friend, there's grass on your path. And so this morning, let's have a look and see if the grass is growing on our path as well. We'll start with reading from the Gospel of Luke and then also from Matthew. So I'm first going to read from Luke um, 22, verses 39 to 46. Luke 22, 39 to 46. And it says, Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw behind them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found him asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked him. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. And I also want to read the same episode, but just from the Gospel of Matthew. We read from Matthew 26, 
verses 36 to 46. It says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found him sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left him and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. So the garden at Gethsemane, um, just the mention of that name produces various images in our minds. You know, pictures of prayer, agony, and betrayal. And I hear that it is a beautiful sight. I've never been there, and maybe some of you have. But tourists visiting it are often told that eight of the olive trees there today were nearly already a century or more old when Jesus went there that night. Amazing. So our scripture from Matthew begins with, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. Luke 22 verse 39 tells us about it in this way. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. So being in the garden at Gethsemane was not something that was unusual for Jesus. Um, he was, um, he was in, when he was in Jerusalem, that was where he usually went to pray. And so when Judas went hunting for Jesus to betray him, he knew exactly where to go because Jesus had gone as usual to the garden at Gethsemane to pray. Surveys indicate that about 85% of people say that they pray. Some pray a lot and some maybe not that much. Um, but 85% of us say that we pray. I have heard that even 20% of self-proclaimed atheists and agnostics say that they pray too. I'm not sure to whom they pray, but they say that they pray. You see, God has offered us a source of strength through prayer, but too seldom do most of us pray. So this morning as we look at the garden at Gethsemane, the place where Jesus prayed, may God help us to realize the power of prayer that he has so freely offered to us. Do you have a place that is your place of prayer, a garden at Gethsemane where you go? Is there a spot where maybe early in the morning or during the day or late at night you can go and be undisturbed in prayer. Gethsemane was a place of prayer for Jesus, but for him it was more than that. First of all, we see that for Jesus it was also a place of privacy. Verses 36 and 37 tell us that as Jesus and his disciples reached the garden, Jesus said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. So here is the scene. After eating the Passover meal together in the upper room, Jesus and 11 of his disciples walk back towards Bethany. Judas is not with him. He has already left him earlier to um, carry out his plan to betray Jesus. As Jesus and his disciples are going up the Mount of Olives, they come to the garden at Gethsemane. And Jesus stops at the entrance and he leaves eight of the disciples behind and he takes three with him, Peter, James, and John. 
And then after asking them to watch and pray, Luke tells us that he left them and went a stone's throw beyond them. And then he fell to the ground and prayed all alone with God. And that is the same with us. We also need our garden of Gethsemane where we can spend some private time with God. A place of privacy. A, pl a time where, but that we, where we need to be alone with God. And I imagine most of us have experienced times like that. But secondly, the garden at Gethsemane was also a place of great agony for Jesus. If we look at verse 38, it says, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. For Jesus, it was a time of intense agony. He knew that tomorrow, uh, what, would what would tomorrow hold for him? He knew of the illegal trials, the scourge's whip, the crown of thorns, and the cross. So there can be no doubt about the agony that Jesus was feeling. The Gospel of John says that when Jesus left the upper room <coughs> sorry, with his disciples to go to the garden at Gethsemane, they crossed the Kid Kidron Valley. And in that valley was... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> And in that valley was a stream called the Brook of Kidron. And that flowed down from the Temple Mount. And remember on that day, Passover, that day, thousands of lambs had been slaughtered and sacrificed at, on the Temple Mount. And the blood of those lambs had drained out upon the Temple Mount and all the way down the Brook of Kidron. So the brook of Kidron would have been red with their blood. And as Jesus, the Lamb of God, as he crossed that brook, he knew tomorrow it will be my blood that flows. Luke 22 verse 44 says, And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Scientists say that it is possible in moments of intense stress for capillaries to burst and blood to mix with sweat. And as Jesus agonized in prayer, that it must have happened with him. But then we also see that for Jesus, Gethsemane was a place of submission. Verse 39 says, Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. So Jesus completely submitted himself to God's will. I think sometimes and probably most of the times if I speak for myself, we come to God in prayer and say, God, this is what I think should happen. I think sometimes we forget that we are God's children and we think we are God's consultant. And we are here to tell God how things should be done. Just follow my plan, do this and this and this and everything will work out fine. But because our Heavenly Father knows what is best for us. He may not always give us what we want. Garth Brooks is a country singer and he has a song that's entitled Unanswered Prayers. So and in the song he sings about going back to his high school reunion and seeing his old sweetheart. And she was the one he once planned to marry, the one that he thought he wouldn't be able to live without. But after high school, uh, for some reason, they went their separate ways. And after seeing her again at the reunion, he wrote the song and he said, Lord, thank you for unanswered prayers. I think sometimes we don't realize it, but our unanswered prayers are sometimes the greatest gift that God can give us. Jesus knew exactly what was happening, so he prayed, My Father, if possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. And next we see that for Jesus, the garden was also a place of patience and understanding. We see in verses 40 and 41, um, when he returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping. Not once, but three times. <coughs> and now we have to sympathize with these apostles here, I mean, don't we? It, had been, it has been 
incredibly busy week for them. There was the triumphal entry as Jesus came into the city and was greeted with um, hosannas and the waving of palm branches. And after that, there was the cleansing of the, ta- the temple and the conflict with religious leaders. The Passover meal in the upper room had also been a very emotional experience as Jesus told them again that he was going to die and that one of them would betray him. And then they had to walk all the way to the Mount of, up the Mount of Olives to the garden at Gethsemane. And by then it was probably well after midnight. So they were tired. They wanted to do what Jesus asked them to do, but they fell asleep. And when Jesus came back to where they were, notice his patience. Notice his understanding. He didn't bawl them out, didn't shout at them, didn't say, what on earth are you doing? He gently reminded them of what they were supposed to do and said, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And I think one of the benefits of prayer that, that of prayer ought to be that we all become more patient with each other. If we're not patient with each other, maybe we're not praying the way we should. Verse 42 says, He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Verse 43 says, When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left him and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. And I think what these verses are teaching us is what said also mentioned this morning is that we need to be persistent in our prayers. Never giving up. Coming again and again and pray to the Lord. Seeking His will for our lives. How many times do we want something from the Lord? We go and we ask once and then we wait for it to happen. And after a few days, we just give up on God. Say, no, God's not listening. He's not interested. How many times do we actually go back? How many times do we appeal to God with our requests? The Bible here, we see Jesus did it himself. Three times in a short span of time, he went back with the same request. And then we also see that for Jesus, the garden at Gethsemane was a place of strength and renewal. And I hope that your garden is also a place where you get renewed strength. Verse 45 and 46 tell us, Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let's go. Here comes my betrayer. So what a change. Just a few verses ago, we were reading about Jesus being sorrowful and troubled. And near the point of death. But here we see renewed energy. Jesus is saying, it's time. Rise up. Let's go. So where did this renewed strength and determination come from? I think it could only have come from his prayer time in the garden at Gethsemane. Luke 22 verse 43 says that as Jesus was praying, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Now he is ready to face the cross for us. In his book, Too Busy Not to Pray, Bill Abel says that if the request is wrong, God says no. If the timing is wrong, God says slow. If we are wrong, God says grow. But if everything is right, God says go. And so God said to Jesus, it's time to go. I just want to have a quick look at the arrest of Jesus and I'm not going to read through verses 47 to 49 um, the whole piece uh, where Jesus got arrested it just says um, it tells us that the betrayer had arranged the signal with him the one I kiss is the man arrest him going at once to Jesus Judah said greetings rabbi and kissed him have you ever been betrayed by someone you loved and trusted If so, you understand the deep hurt and the pain that Jesus must have felt as Judas approached. Despite this, notice how Jesus responds in verse 50. He says, Jesus replied, friend, do what you came for. He still called Judas his friend. Now, I cannot help but smile every time I read this passage. Uh, Maybe it's inappropriate, but um, 
you know, it, it always reminds me of, there's a saying, um, this joke that they say about South Africans, that it, when a South African says, listen, my friend, it's time for you to start running. Because he's definitely not your friend. And the time to listen has long passed. But anyway, luckily Jesus is different from most of us. And I think one lesson that we also need to learn from this passage is that prayer strengthens us to face our difficulties more than changing our circumstances. It strengthens us to face our difficulties more than changing our circumstances. Sometimes, yes, prayer does change circumstances. Sometimes we see people healed who should have died. Sometimes we see situations in life change because we have prayed about them. But for most part, God gives us the strength to face the difficulties more than he changes the circumstances. When the Apostle Paul prayed that the thorn in his flesh be removed, God said, no, you'll keep that thorn in, fl in the flesh, but I'll give you the strength you need. And Paul proclaimed that God's grace was sufficient for him. When Jesus prayed three times, let this cup pass from me, God said, no, this is part of the plan, but I'll give you the strength to face the cross. And sometimes God will say to us too, I will give you the strength to face what you are going through. So he might not always change the circumstances, but he will give us the strength to face the difficulties. I often wonder why we so struggle to pray. And I'm the first one to raise my hand to say that I often struggle with prayer. Prayer does not come naturally to us. I think in our more honest moments, most of us will admit that it's a struggle to pray as we'd like. And yet there's no avoiding the fact that Scripture insists that God has hardwired the universe in such a way that he works primarily through prayer. So why is it that our prayer lives often fall so short of our prayer desires? And I would hazard a guess that it is the number one reason is the busyness in our lives. We are so busy, always running around doing something. But believe it or not, the one that taught us to pray, Jesus, had a life remarkably like our own. Jesus was an incredibly busy man. The Gospels record only 52 days of his life. But what a whirlwind of activity. If you wrote down each day's events on 52 sheets of paper, I doubt that you would have enough room on each page to report even the significant incidents in Jesus' life. And the busiest day of the, our Lord is recorded in Mark chapter 1. So if you have time today, go and read it, Mark chapter 1. I mean, this day was crowded with miracles to perform, lessons to teach, people to heal, disputes to settle. It was a day dedicated to reaching out to people and ministering to their deep needs. And you will surely know that such intensive ministry can, can be extremely draining. Jesus didn't just preach several sermons and go home to a nice filling dinner. It says one after another, people came to him for healing, for understanding, for a gentle touch. Minute after minute, after after, off, hour after hour, from the sun's rising until it, the pale glow of sunset, Jesus worked. People with problems flocked to him. A son was ill, a daughter crippled, a demon tormented a neighbor. Two friends were arguing over some point of doctrine. And one by one, need after need, Jesus ministered to them all. But still he wasn't done. Mark tells us, it, and when evening had come, after the sun had set, they began bringing to him all who were ill and demon possessed, and the whole city had gathered at the door. The morning after is always the hardest, isn't it? We've had a hard day's work. We're exhausted. You have nothing left to give, and your bed seems like heaven. 
And that's the warning when you say, well, I guess I'll just skip it today. But not for Jesus. The morning after the busiest day in his life was the morning that he chose to rise early and pray. Oh, but that's Jesus, you might say. Following that example seems impossible, no matter how, what, uh, how much I want to. For us, survival is the biggest success story we dare hope for. We are ordinary people, not the Son of God, and we feel too tired a lot. We'd like to pray more, but we understand that Jesus took time out to pray even after the most exhausting day of his life. But that is Jesus. We just ordinary people. All of us are busy. Life isn't slowing down, it's speeding up. Yet, that is precisely why we need to take time to pray. It is said that Martin Luther declared he had so much to do, he could not get through it without spending at least three or four hours on his knees before God each morning. But unlike him, we are tempted to think that when life slows down, then we'll take time to pray. John Fleming almost stepped into that same trap. Fleming wrote, I find myself thinking when life settles down, I'll dot, dot, dot. But I should have learned by now that life never settles down for long. Whatever I want to accomplish, I must do with life unsettled. So let us conclude. These are stressful times that we live in. We all need a garden at Gethsemane. We, we can recognize that we're not strong enough or wise enough to do what God has called us to do. We can only do it as we realize His strength and His blessings in our lives. Oswald Chambers puts it all in perspective when he writes, Remember, no one has time to pray. We have to take time from other valuable things to understand how necessary prayer is. The things that act like thorns and strings, stings in our personal life will go away instantly when we pray. Someone wrote, I prayed for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for health that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel my need for God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing I asked for, yet everything I'd hoped for. Almost despite myself, my prayers were answered. I am among all men most richly blessed. Amen. Dear Father God, we want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for um, just having this time together in fellowship. That we can gather in person and also online to listen to your word. Lord, I want to thank you for um, your example at the garden at Gethsemane place that we all need in our lives, Lord, where we can go, where we can have some time with you, that we can wrestle with you, where we can raise our questions, and we can share our happiness, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you will help us, that our, the paths to our prayer rooms will not be covered with grass, Lord, that, that there won't be time for grass to grow, but that every opportunity we have, Lord, that we will run to you, that we will spend time with you in your presence. I want to thank you for your love, thank you for this time that we can celebrate Easter, the greatest event in our calendar, Lord, the time that you changed the whole world, where three days in history changed the whole the whole universe, Lord, and we thank you for that. Thank you for um, your son who died for us, but also for his resurrection. Thank you that all our sins could be washed away by the blood that flowed for our sins. Thank you for the resurrection, Lord, that gives us eternal life and that we can spend time with you for the rest of our lives. As we go from here, Lord, guide our steps and help us to keep our eyes on you for everything we do. In your name, amen. Thank you, everyone. Um, join us outside. Let's have some tea and coffee.
and um, hope you have a great week ahead and don't let the grass grow on your parts. Uh, have a good week.